of it. They did use to account for the beam being weaker on the periphery of it. That's a good question. But now the, the new ultrasound machines, they already account for that when they develop the machine. So it's right. So it's not exchangeable. Right, it's not. It's not. It's not. It, it's already going to take consider that mm -hmm. over over that space that it's not going to be the same amount of intensity from the cross section. Of it. Mm -hmm. Good question. Good question. Okay. Let's talk about our temporal. Any other questions on spatial consideration? Remember, space for burning distance of time. We're taking that beam and cross section. Okay. And measuring intensity. Two ways to do that. We're going to take the spatial peak intensity, the very peak. The very spot where the intensity is the highest in cross section was usually the center of the beam. And we're going to take the spatial average intensity, which is usually, in, uh, which is just taking a cross sectional average mm -hmm. of those intensities across that beam. Okay. Is it any cross section? Mm -hmm. Any cross section? Well, yeah. I mean, it's wherever they decide to take those values. From. You know, um, I don't, I don't know how they measure beam intensity myself, as far as like the device they're using to measure the intensity. But um, definitely, they're going to take certain points of that of that beam and determine that cross-sectional uh, that, that average that average number. Okay. So, temporal considerations. Remember, temporal work is referring to time mm -hmm. because the beam varies over time. The beam gets as it propagates, mm -hmm. it gets weaker. All right. With pulse ultrasound, same same thing with like. Uh, yeah. Um, with pulse ultrasound, the transducer is usually receiving uh, or listening, but for brief moments it is transmitted or talking. Remember, at uh, it's only talking 0.02 percent, right? Mm -hmm. And it's listening 99.8 percent. I'm sorry, 0.2 percent, and it's listening 99.8 percent. Okay, so it's listening a lot more than it's talking. But during that time, we do have to account for our temporal considerations, our temporal intensities. Uh, or intensity as it's traveling over time. Okay. There are four methods to measure intensity uh, while accounting for its pulsing characteristics. Okay. There are four methods for measuring intensity while accounting for its pulsing characteristics. Okay. Remember time. A good example of like temporal resolution, think about have everybody in here used M mode before, right? Everybody in here has measured a baby. Has everybody been to MFM yet? Mm -hmm. Everybody hasn't been in MFM, but yeah. okay. You haven't been, but they're gonna you're gonna see when they use M mode or when they're actually getting the uh, beats per minute of the baby, that's an example of temporal or using your not necessarily temporal intensity, but using your temporal um, resolution right there because you know, the heart is beating, it doesn't stop, it's a moving structure. So we have to make sure that we're measuring it accurately, and that's what MO does, it measures the heartbeat accurately. And that's why you can you can see it, it goes by the distance, I'm sorry, by the depth of the body, which is also representing the time the sound is traveling, right? So when you see all of those squiggly lines, but you also see that, that in that middle of the body where that heart is beating, that's why you see the little notches or the little jumps, but you don't see them everywhere else because that's the only part in the body that's moving. So if your machine is, doesn't have great temporal resolution, then you're not going to get really great numbers concerning the baby's heartbeat. Okay, I'm going to give you an example of when you when when a temporal resolution would come in hand. It's like a Doppler. No, like uh, something like Doppler, but when you go uh, far away from the uh, the uh, sound, it will be weaker. Uh, this when you Go, going toward, yeah, with Doppler going towards the the, the sound is going to be stronger. Going away is going to be weaker. Yeah. I, I don't mm, I don't really like that because that only concerns direction. It doesn't mm -hmm. concern time. Doppler yeah. concerns uh, direction, not time. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. Yeah. The M mode is all about time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about those modes, chapter ten. All right. So there are four ways to measure temporal intensity. Okay. All right. So. The first one will be temporal peak intensity, or I small t p. Okay, measure the intensity of beam at an instant in time of its maximum value. All right, and and I'm I'm saying that I'm not saying that I know where that is every single beam. Right, that's up to the manufacturer. They're going to measure this beam in different spots in time. It normally it should be closer to the source, right? It shouldn't be distal to the source. It's probably going to be a lot closer to the source. Okay, and that's what, that's what we're going to measure the intensity of beam at the instant in time of its maximum value. Okay, 
remember, it's, it's, it's the maximum value as well, but just like the spatial considerations, uh, spatial peak, this is in time, spatial peak is the space where the, uh, the intensity is gonna be highest. Like I said, usually in the center of the beam. All right? The second one would be I max or I am. I'm gonna make a little graphic for us up here in a second as I go through these, okay? I max or I am, that's taking the average intensity during the most intense half cycle. And I'll explain what that half cycle is, guys. Um, real quick, everybody looking at, look at figure five, three in the book, page uh, 71, right there. You see, um, you see the graphic is showing, see the black arrow? Mm -hmm. That's actually measuring, that's the one spot in time where they're measuring the maximum value. That's the temporal peak, right? Okay, remember, ultrasound is, con is it's a series of compressions and rarefactions, right? Compressions, compressions uh, being where the molecules are squeezed together, right? That's gonna be on the positive side, okay? And rarefactions are gonna be on the, the, the trucks or the negative side, okay? So, when we're talking about um, I max or, or I M, that's gonna take that whole average, not just the peak or the middle number, that's gonna take the whole average across that, that complete compression. So, let's see, I'm gonna need a little, little beam right here. So, of course, this is gonna be my uh, temporal peak right there, but the I max is gonna take the average across, across that right there, okay, across that beam, all right? So that's why the IBM is a little lower as far as intensity when it's when we're talking about um, temporal peak intensity because that's just one spot in time. The, temp, the I max is taking the average intensity across the most intense half cycle, meaning because it's saying half cycle because not only does it remember it's a series of peaks and troughs, right? So the most intense half cycle will always be on the positive side, correct? We talk about intensity. Okay. Across that average of that of that compression. Why is it will be over on the positive? Because that's gonna be the most intense, the most intense half cycle. That's why that's mm -hmm. I mean and that's why you see it highlighted all the way around in the red. Because it's taking the average of that complete compression or that complete um, half cycle of that beam. Mm -hmm. Okay, in time. Alright? So could you look at that drawing and put where the peak intensity would it be just above the I'm asking you say that or not say I'm sorry. So if you were looking at that drawing, could you put on there the peak intensity on there or no? Yeah, that's the temporal peak is the, the very the very highest intensity of that beam at a certain time. Okay, so not going across just at the intensity. At the very tip top. At the very tip top where the IMAX is taking this whole average right here. The average of this whole space right there and just averaging that, that intensity of over time. Okay. I need one though, I need one of all school church fans right there. Okay. Our pulse average intensity guys are IPA. That's gonna be the average intensity during the pulse duration. Just during the pulse, okay? That's gonna be just just during the pulse. Alright? Remember averages are always lower than peaks, of course. Okay. So Again, pulse average is taking the average intensity during the pulse duration, okay? During our on time, during our transmit time only, all right? Our next one would be temporal average intensity, or ITA. That's gonna be the average intensity during the entire pulse repetition period. So that's gonna be the lowest, right? Because it's accounting for the on and off time. Remember, when it's not, when it's off, it doesn't have an intensity. So that's gonna make it very low, or 500 times lower than the uh, pulse average intensity, right? Because it's listening 500 times more than it's transmitting. Okay. Go, then. Go, then. Go, then. How do we get that number? Nine, what is it? Um, 99.8 divided by 0.2 will give you 500. That's how we come up with that number, 500. Mm -hmm. For anybody that's one car looking at me like, 500, mm -hmm. that's where that number comes from, guys. So, I do have an image right here, guys, that I, that I like a lot. So, our, um, our temporal peak, again, is gonna be 
where the where it's the highest intensity in time at a particular uh, space and time, right there. Our uh, our IMAX is then, again is going to consider this whole area right here, this whole area right here, and average those out. Okay, that's the um, going to consider the um, the most intense half cycle. Again, compression above, rarefaction below. Okay, compression above, rarefaction below. All right. Our intensity pulse average will be the average intensity of the entire pulse, or just that pulse duration, okay? And the intensity temporal average would be, remember, temporal would referring to all time, right? It's referring to all time. That's considered on time and off time. That's going to be our PRP. It's going to take the average intensities across an off time and an on time, okay? And that's why that's going to be the lowest one because it's, it's going to be off a lot longer than it's on, okay? So if you account for that in that time that it's off, that zero over however however long, 500 times longer than it's on, that's going to cause that temporal average to be extremely low, okay? Guys, I'll, uh, I'll resend this to you because I did add some stuff to uh, the PowerPoint that I, that I didn't uh, send you guys. Okay? I was adding stuff to it yesterday. Okay. So... These are some of our temporal consideration facts. The highest temporal intensity is the temporal peak, of course. That's our highest or maximum value, right? Mm -hmm. All right. It is slightly higher than the IMAX. So remember, the IMAX is the average over the whole half half cycle of a uh, of a wave. All right. But well, the temporal peak is just one particular spot in time where it's the maximum. All right. The pulse average intensity or IPA is lower than the IMAX because it includes values over the entire pulse duration. And that's because, like I said, as the sound propagates, it's lower because as the sound propagates, it's going to lose energy. So, it, however, as it's going to consider more than one cycle. So, those cycles are going to get less and less in amplitude or magnitude over that time, correct? So, we're gonna, it's going to lose energy as it propagates. So, that's why the, P, the IPA, the pulse average intensity, is lower over the pulse duration. And the tail end of the pulse is less intense than, than the beginning because of propagation and or attenuation. All right? The lowest of all temporal intensities is the temporal average. Temporal average is up to 500 times lower than the others because it is the only method that includes the receive time. Okay? It's the only method that includes the receive time. Remember, we're talking about temporal average. That's going to be our PRP from the beginning of the pulse to the beginning of the next pulse. One on time, one off time. Okay, we go there, guys. Mm -hmm. okay. So you have a little. So these are temporal intensities from the largest to the smallest. Of course, guys, you never know. I'm going to ask this question, so you have to know it from the smallest to the largest as well. Okay. So from the largest to the smallest is going to be our intensity, temporal peak, right? And that's the one space and time where it's the maximum. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next one is going to be our intensity max. Okay. That's the average of one half cycle. All right, and then the next one below that one is going to be our intensity post average. Mm -hmm. That's just going to be concerning our post duration or our on time. Guys, remember, I may use post. I may not always say on time. I may not always say transmit time. I may just say post duration because we know that I'm only talking about our transmit time. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the most, the least intense will be the temporal average because that's also accounting for the listening time as well. Mm -hmm. And we listen a lot longer. And when you're listening, there's no intensity, right? We're not sending out any kind of information. We're not sending out any pulses. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's why that was going to be the lowest. So that's going to be our PRP. All right? One on time, one off time. We're good, We're good guys? Okay. Like I said, also know, also know that from smallest to largest as well. All right? So... This is, yes, ma'am. Right, it's, it's accounting for um, the pulse and the listening time, the mm -hmm. pulse duration and the off time. Yes. The temporal average, yes, ma'am. So, um, again, let's do a little review. So, this is our, this is our temporal, the top graph would be our temporal considerations, right? Again, you've seen this already a few slides ago. So, our temporal peak. That moment in time where the intensity is the greatest. 
are of maximum value, okay? The IMAX is not listed on this graphic, but if, if I was to draw a, little, a circle around this area right here, the IMAX will be the average intensity over that half cycle, okay? Not include, like, not including this down here, just, just the most intense half cycle, all right? So I'd always, I would always take it, it was, that's all, so the IMAX is always gonna be probably the first cycle within that pulse, right? Because the pulse is gonna get weaker over time, all right? Then we have the intensity pulse average. That's gonna be the average intensity across the, the, uh, the duration of that pulse, okay? The average intensity across the duration of that pulse, okay? Then we have uh, the temporal average intensity, okay? And that's gonna include one off time, one on time, or one on time, one off time, also known as our PRP, all right? And that's gonna be the temporal average across the listening time and the, the transmit time. The listening time and the talking time. The transmit and the receive time. The on and the off time. Okay. So those, remember, those are our two components of pulse ultrasound right there. And next one. Okay. 